Hey everyone, just so you know, this is my third time at recording this video. The first time I didn't realize that my lapel mic had failed and the recording was completely unusable. In 1895 in Siegerland, Germany, the first charter slash. So I ordered a lapel mic from Amazon, but I didn't want to wait three more days before I released the video. So I tried to re-record the entire thing using my onboard mic. The sound quality came out horrible. Hello all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there. Welcome to another episode of... So here we are with my new lapel mic from Amazon. Third time's a charm, they say. Well, let's see if this one will make the cut. Let's get that intro rolling so we can do our thing. All you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there, welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. The thing that people usually marvel about when it comes to buses is the sheer size of these things. At least, that's what did it for me when I was three years old and saw my first bus back in China. I became obsessed with them, and still am till this day. The Ocean Channel 2 left me a comment requesting a video on double-decker buses. An excellent request. Today, we're going to take a look at just how large these buses can get. The term bus is actually a shortened form of the original name omnibus, which in Latin means for all. The term was coined when a French mass transportation service started in 1823 by a French corn mill owner named Stanislas Baudry in Richburg, which is a suburb of Nantes in France. He named his transportation service Voiture Omnibus, which translated to English means vehicle for all. The vehicle was a horse-drawn carriage and it was actually a double-decker. By the 1830s, Stanislas' concept had evolved in England and the first official regular intercity bus service was started. A gentleman by the name of Walter Hancock recognized that the conditions of the roads back then were too hazardous for horse-drawn transportation. And so on April 22, 1833, the first mechanically propelled omnibus, along with the first official city bus service, started operating on the streets of London. I was born on April 22nd. Is that a coincidence? Is that why I love buses so much? I think I'm his reincarnation. In 1895 in Siegerland, Germany, the first charter line run bus company started operating with two established routes. It used a six passenger motor carriage and interestingly enough, it lasted only two years being extremely unprofitable. Even back then it was a tough industry. So bus company owners, don't feel bad. So that's why my dad kept telling me to be a doctor instead of going into the motor coach industry. Well, that and he's a Chinese dad. And most Chinese dads want their kids to be doctors. You doctor yet? No, dad, I'm 12. Talk to me when you doctor. But going back to the London City bus service, it didn't take long for the service to become extremely popular, which meant they needed bigger buses. Back in the early 1900s, the streets were much smaller than what we're used to now, and on top of that, they tended to bend and curve sharply throughout the city, making it difficult for longer vehicles to navigate. When it came time for the need of a larger bus, instead of building them longer, they built them upward. The first commercial double-decker omnibus in England was also horse-drawn, introduced in England in 1847 by a company called Adams & Company. There was actually a triple-decker bus that operated in 1932 with a route from Rome to Tivoli. But one should note that the third level was only at the rear of the bus and did not extend the entire length of the vehicle. So I'll leave it up to you guys to determine whether you want to count that as an actual triple-decker bus or not. There are many fake photos of full triple-deckers as well as quadruple-deckers all over the internet. However, none of them are real. The only real-life triple-decker bus was known as the Night Bus, which appeared on screen in the movie Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Created specifically for the movie, it was never actually used to transport passengers. Now, a triple-decker bus presents a lot of problems if anyone were to actually ever build one. The height would not allow the bus to go under any bridges, and it would constantly be hitting trees and power lines. Also, the vehicle would be very top-heavy, unstable, and would be prone to tipping over. Today, the maximum permissible length of a rigid double-decker bus in England is 15 meters, which is 49 feet 3 inches with three axles, and 13.5 meters, which is roughly 45 feet with two axles. 
and the total maximum dimensions, which include articulated buses, are 18.75 meters, or 61 feet in length, 2.55 meters, which is 8 feet 4 inches in width, and 4.95 meters, which is 16 feet 3 inches in height. On the motor coach side of things, double-decker coach buses are most commonly seen in Europe, and again, because of the smaller size of their roads. In the US, double-decker coach buses are much more of a rare sight, and as far as city buses go, they're pretty much non-existent. Until recently, no manufacturer has created or supplied the US or Canada with any type of double-decker buses. And because of the way mass transportation has evolved here in North America, major infrastructures in the cities, such as bridges, underpasses, street side trees, road signs, and transit garages, simply were not designed to accommodate the height. With street designs in North America evolving to be wider and straighter, US and Canada built their buses with a different philosophy, longer rather than taller. In North America, one would see many more articulated buses servicing city transit needs. Back to the private motor coach charter bus side of things, double-deckers are now available for coach bus operations to purchase here in the US. However, they're not common and there just isn't that big of a market for them. Now, a popular make and model of the double-decker charter bus used in the US is the Van Hool TD925 and the newer version Van Hool Astro Mega TDX27. They're mainly used by a European-based line-run bus company, Megabus, that has now expanded its operations in the US and Canada. Megabus made its iconic double-decker brand image here in North America, providing route services between different cities. Van Hool designed these double-decker buses to be as low height as possible when it came to clearance. These double-deckers stood at a height of 13 feet 1 inch, or 4 meters. Which, if you think about it, wasn't that bad considering the tallest single-deck coach in the U.S. Canadian market is the Prevo H345, which stands at 12 feet 4 inches. That's only 9 inches taller. And to gain an entire deck of passenger seating for only 9 inches more, that wasn't a bad deal. Van Hool could achieve this low height clearance by sacrificing luggage space for passenger space. You see, a conventional single deck motor coach is designed with the passenger deck on top and the luggage compartment and the engine housing down below. On a Van Hool TD925 double decker coach, the luggage bay level was partially removed and what was once the bottom luggage deck was made slightly taller and a passenger cabin was built onto this level but only two-thirds of the total length of the first floor of the bus. You see, the rear one-third of the TD925 was retained to hold luggage as well as house the engine. Only the second floor of the Van Hool TD925 double-decker extended the entire length of the coach, which was the standard 45 feet. This design allowed the standard capacity of a single-deck motor coach to be increased from 56 passengers to 81 passengers. The downfall was the luggage capacity was greatly reduced to being even smaller than that of a 56-passenger single-deck coach. On busy travel days, even a single-deck MCI or Prevo H345, which are known to have the largest luggage bays in the coach bus industry here in the US, would have problems fitting all the 56-passengers luggage into the coach. I can't imagine what it would be like on a Van Hool TD925 that holds 25 more passengers, but only have half the luggage bay capacity of a 56-seat coach. Van Hool approached the limited luggage space by designing an additional luggage pod that could be attached to the rear of the coach. This would add an additional space for the coach to store luggage in. However, it created issues like in order to do any kind of maintenance on the bus, the entire pod would have to be removed. And that was something that had to be done in the garage and not on the open road, which was disastrous during a road failure that involved getting into the engine. It was also very important for carriers like Megabus to carefully survey their routes, especially going into and coming out of urban cities with the double-decker coach. A driver who deviated from his or her route had to be really careful about low clearance bridges and underpasses, as the height of the coach made it difficult to pass under many overpasses inside the city, resulting in several accidents over the years. The high clearance problem and the extremely limited luggage space made the TD925 kind of unpopular for charter work given that any bus going on charters did not operate a fixed route usually, 
and basically had to go wherever the passengers paid for the coach to take them. And very often, charter destinations involved going into dense urban areas. This increased the risk factor and liability for the bus companies and its owners. Not that they didn't have enough to worry about already. Commonly known as the Bendy Bus or Accordion Bus, articulated buses are often found operating in densely populated urban centers as city transit buses. They're usually 60 feet long in contrast to the standard rigid city buses, which are commonly 40 feet long. Some articulated city buses had three segments instead of two, like the Grand Arctic 300. Produced by Volvo, it operates in Rio de Janeiro, making them 98 feet long and they could carry up to 300 passengers. The Grand Arctic 300 holds the world record as the world's longest bus. On the motor coach side of things, in the US, there existed only one articulated motor coach and it's no longer in production. The Prevo H560, which was a 79 passenger articulated motor coach, produced by Prevo Car from 1985 to 1990. While the H560 was an impressive sight to see, it was 60 feet long with two front steering axles, two drive axles, and one tag axle supporting the rear section of the coach. The rear axle was also steerable to allow making sharp cornering easier. An H560 carrying a charter group who wanted to stop for lunch at a McDonald's really made the driver earn his or her pay for the day as maneuvering a 60-foot motor coach at 12 feet 4 inches tall into a cramped fast food parking lot was a bit of a challenge and after dropping the group off, it was not an easy feat to find parking for the vehicle. It's probably also what fast food employees' nightmares are made of. The size of the coach made it illegal to operate in several states, so if your group chartered your H560 to go to or through that state, you would have to probably turn them down. Maintenance was also a nightmare on the Prevo H560. The articulation point was prone to failing, and to do any kind of major work on the engine, the technician would have to actually cut out a few of the support beams in order to remove the engine, and then they would have to weld them back once again when the engine was put back in. This made them extremely unpopular to operate and really limited their sales. Today, you can find a few of them for sale at used bus sales lots. The bus that holds the title of being the largest bus in the world is the Neoplan Jumbo Cruiser. Built by Neoplan Automotive Company in Stuttgart, Germany, the bus is a double-decker articulated vehicle coming in at 60 feet long, 8 feet 2 inches wide, and 13 feet tall. The bus was built between 1975 and 1992, holds the Guinness World Record as being the world's largest coach bus. It seats 170 passengers and weighs in at 63,934 pounds. The coach never went into full production and only 11 of them were ever made. The first 10 models had the engine and drive axle in the middle of the vehicle, whereas the 11th was built with the engine and drive axle in the rear. Currently, there are nine jumbo cruisers still in service, but not functioning as passenger transportation vehicles. Most of them are now used as event vehicles and marketing tools. The first one ever built in 1975 has now been converted to the largest motor home in the world, known as Der Bus, which translated into English means the bus. All 11 of these jumbo cruisers operated fixed line runs in and out of Germany and into other countries. Their careers as line run commuter buses didn't last very long. This is mainly due to the neighboring countries requiring very expensive and special permits for these buses to enter which quickly took away the thin profit margin out of their owner's pockets. On February 24th, 2010, a jumbo cruiser operating a regular route from Belgium to Spain was involved in a rollover accident. Initially, the bus company and designers suspected the accident was caused by a design flaw, but was later determined to be caused by driver error while handling a cup of coffee. Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, if you like the content on this channel, Please remember to hit that like button. That tells YouTube to boost my channel up on their advertisement algorithm, which helps my channel out a lot. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. That also tells YouTube that people like my channel and YouTube will suggest it to more people around the world, which in turn helps the world to see just how many bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts there are out here. I mean, let's face it, people who love buses don't really have a place in the hobbies and interests category, at least not yet. But we're definitely out here and I want people to know it.
If you want to support my work and help out with the hours I put into making these videos and the equipment that I purchase on my own to record them, consider being a patron on my Patreon page. Just visit patreon.com slash motorcoach. It takes two minutes to become a patron and for a dollar a month, you can become a supporter of my channel. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have any additional information to add or feel that I've stated any facts that are erroneous, please don't hesitate to post them down in the comment boxes below. I absolutely love reading all the bus conversation that go on whenever I release one of my videos. And I'm a firm believer that if we all put our heads together and share all the knowledge we have in a kind and productive way, the world would be a much better place. Oh, and I almost forgot, if you're watching this, then you are part of the motor coach world.